boobs. <laughs> Hello there, it is I, the Geordie Nerd, and I am back again with another episode of The Office, Season 2, Episode 17. Woo! I uh, don't know where that energy come from, because I'm just, I'm waiting at about 30% of the rest of the video, so. <laughs> anyway, hope you're all well. Um, Yeah, link down below for the Patreon. Let's just get this now, and have some fun. Let's think this through. If we ask corporate for that... Then they are either gonna say yes or no. Could go either way. Whoa, genius. Intercepted. Right Sorry here. About that. Give it to me. Phillips, give me the ball. Okay, give me the ball. Give me you guys oh, the creed. Cool. Give oh. me the ball right here, now. Michael, give it to me. Ryan. Ah! <laughs> ah! Fumble! Ah! I mean, I'm not sure you're supposed to assault people in the office, Dwight. I mean, I'm all for having fun, okay? But I do not want to work in an office. Well, I mean, I don't want to work in an office, period. But I don't want to work in an office where, out of nowhere, I could be hit in the face with a football. American or otherwise. What was the ninth place prize again? A loaf of bread? Pugino's pizza. Oh, great. Tasty, terrific pizza. Hmm. Question. Do their pizzas play DVDs? Dwight was the top salesman of the year at our company. He wins a little prize money and gets honored at some convention. Dwight, you just want to punch him. Speaker at the sales convention. Been there, done that. Went there again, did it again. Two years in a row. Consecutive. I just, I miss the feeling of knowing that you did a good job because somebody gives you proof of it. <laughs> Sir, you're awesome. Here's a plaque. What? I want a plaque. If I made you laugh, you owe me a plaque. <laughs> I get here early every morning so I can set the thermostat. I like it a little cooler, around 66 degrees. I'm more productive. Maybe some people don't like it as cold as I do. But I don't care. But I like it cold. Apparently that's a trait of Vikings, apparently. They prefer cold. I prefer the cold. Therefore, I'm a Viking. Attention, everybody. Attention, please. I have some very great news from corporate. We had a wonderful quarter, and as a result, all of you are getting bonuses for $1,000. Yeah! Congratulations. <laughs> you see that? You see how they responded to me? In that moment, I had them. That is so great about the bonus! No, no, it's not true. I was just... Oh, well, I'm sure that won't backfire, Michael. You dumbass. There will be no bonuses. Why would this affect our bonuses? They're unrelated. Is Brad okay? He will never act again. Also, this branch is closing. What the hell's going on here? Are we out of jobs? Yes. This is karma because of what he did to Jennifer Aniston. Just kidding. So I was kidding, and I don't know why, because it wasn't funny, and it was just horrible. What did Brad Pitt do to Jennifer Aniston? I'm not up on me, on me, on me celebrities, so what did he, what did he do? Uh, you know what, this isn't working, because um, I'm not nervous in front of them. They're my subordinates. No, we're not. Uh, <laughs> Dwight is not going to do a good job. It's sad. And they're expecting excellence because I did do such a good job. Two years in a row, I killed. It was amazing. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling that maybe he didn't kill? I mean, he's just got a different perspective on what happened. You've got to wave your arms and you've got to pound your fists many times. So it's to emphasize your point. Okay, I didn't actually major in public speaking, but I did download speeches from some of history's famous dictators. Like this one, originally given by Benito Mussolini. Okay, look, I know you're giving this speech on your own, but I wrote up a few talking points for you to take a look at. Is this going to be the best prank ever? The very best of luck to you, Dwight. Thank you, Angela. I mean, I'm, I'm no Sherlock Holmes, but um, I think them two might have a thing for each other. I'd like to introduce the Dunder Mifflin Salesman of the Year, Dwight Schrute. <laughs> 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 
Then a bit of pee come out, has it? Good morning, Vietnam! <laughs> what is the difference between a salesman and a saleswoman? Boobs. <laughs> I always said it at 69. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Ryan, do you know when you would want to get married? Actually, I don't see ever getting married. Yeah, it's not for oh. me, like. Ryan, you should be more sensitive. It's obvious she likes you, and comments like that, they just. I know what I said. I mean, he doesn't want anything. If he doesn't like her, it's best to be up front and say it. So she can move forward. <laughs> Blood alone moves the wheels of history! <laughs> Genius. As a child, when we realized that the world could be conquered, it has been a lifetime struggle, a never-ending fight, I say to you, and you will understand that it is a privilege to fight. <laughs> How is this working? How? I've got a timeshare in Key West that might be available. Maybe. Thanks. You really think you're gonna go? Yeah, I'm definitely going. Nice. Send me a postcard. Jim has worked at the same place for five years. Jim eats the same ham and cheese sandwich every day for lunch. I don't know, if I were a betting man, I'd say he will have a fun weekend in Philadelphia. Yeah, I don't see Jim going. It's just a reaction to Pam getting married. He wants to run away from that. When in reality, you should be like, Pam, baby. This is gonna, this is gonna happen. You just don't know yet. We must never acquiesce, for it is together, together that we prevail. We must never cede control of the motherland, for it is together that we prevail. <laughs> How is this working? It's just a bunch of nonsense words. Australia, I have always wanted to go there. I'm going. I'm a little bug, baby. To We're going on a trip. To Mordor, but <laughs> I'm leaving on June eighth. Oh. Yeah. And I'm really sorry about that. I just. Oh. Yeah, that's too bad. There's a place on the plane for you, baby girl. Let's do some magic. <laughs> She's like, I don't have my ID. Please give me one. Uh -huh. And he's like, I can't do that. I can't serve you. Con artist. She might have been. So she says, fine. I will go to my room, I will get my purse, I will come back, I'll show you my ID. She hasn't come back yet. She's probably in the room drinking from the mini bar. Come on. <laughs> right? Dwight gave a great- Well, that, that was riveting, Michael. I captivated the guy who captivated a thousand guys. Can you believe that? A thousand guys. Well, uh, wonderful. Yeah, so... Uh, Jim should do my plan and use my words because, you know, I'm a poet and that would 100% work. Uh, anyway, yeah, good episode. I love that um, Jim set up Dwight and yet somehow it still worked. He was just banging and being loud, which is all I know. But that's that's what you come here for. Minus the banging. I don't bang because it would, it, it would make funny noises in the microphone. See? And the camera shakes. You don't want that. You just yell for the rambling and the noise. I get loud. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to go lie down and drink something that is better than this cream soda. I'm out. See you all in the next one.